Hello, dears, and welcome to Al Husseini Virtual Lab Pathology Talks, Tips, and Practical Tips. Today, I'm going to share with you this interesting case of ganglioglioma. So, this is a 24 year old male patient who presented with seizure and was found to have a space occupying lesion in the temporal lobe for which he underwent resection. And as you can see from the low power magnification, all areas of calcification, coarse calcification, and these were actually identified in uh, on imaging in particular on the CT scan. And then we have this area of what appears to be proliferation of large cells. But first of all, I would like to focus on this area, the area in between. And this area was really rich in um, what appeared to be gliosis with rosenthal fibers and remember any space occupying lesion that is long standing will be surrounded by gliosis with rosenthal fibers a feature similar to fibrosis in uh, the other parts of the body but this in itself is not the lesion. So around ganglioglomas, around the craniopharyngiomas, around the hemangioblastomas, you will find this type of reaction. And you have always to be aware of uh, this type of gliosis with Rosenthal fibers because it might be mistaken sometime for the lesion itself. So you have to be aware of uh, uh, this potential pitfall. Now into the area where we have the proliferation of the large cells, and as you can see, large, really uh, humongous cells, some with abnormal shapes, including vacuoles in the cytoplasm. Here, for example, is a typical ganglion cell or a neuron, uh, neuronal cell, and this one as well, but with a vacuole. And look at this one with condensation in the cytoplasm. And this is the typical a, a ganglion cell, and this is another one, and so on and so forth. Now, in between those ones, the cells which are spindly cells are the glial component. Now, on high power magnification, one important feature of ganglioglioma is actually the presence of inflammatory infiltrate around the blood vessels. But in particular, if you look specifically, you will try, you will start to see plasma cells around the vessels as well as in the interstitium or in the tissue in between the ganglion cells. And this is an excellent clue that we're dealing with a, a ganglioglioma. But again, here with the high power magnification, the abnormal shape as well as the distribution of the ganglion cells. Look at this one, for example. We have vacuolization at the periphery. We have like a dysplastic appearance of the nucleus where the nucleolus is pushed to one side. Remember that in the typical ganglion cell, the nucleolus is central. Look at this one with a nucleolus and a smaller one uh, to the side, abnormal shape of the cytoplasm. This is what we really call the dysplastic in neuron or the dysplastic ganglion cells. Now, one of the most important specialist stains that can be really very helpful in supporting the diagnosis of ganglioglioma is reticulin stain, where we see increased deposition of reticulin fibers in between the tumor cells. Now, remember that in general, a brain is devoid of reticulin fibers. So whenever we see uh, ganglions, uh, whenever we see increased reticulin fibers in a tumor cell, this is very helpful to support that uh, this is some sort of a tumor, for example, ganglioglioma or PXA. Now, GFAB shows positivity in the cells in between the ganglion cells, and then synaptophysin is a strongly uh, positive, strongly diffusely positive in the abnormal ganglion cells, including the abnormal cytoplasmic formations, some this, uh, uh, condensation of the nissel substance um, at the periphery of the ganglion cells. And these ones which are negative were actually the ones which were positive with the uh, GFAB. Very important. 
and helps you really to support the diagnosis of ganglion glioma is a chromogranin A positivity because chromogranin A positivity in the central nervous system, unlike cyanotophysin, is very restricted. So we have only few neurons in the central nervous system in localized area is in specific areas that are chromogranin positive, for example, the Purkinje cells in the cerebellum and some of the neurons in the hippocampus. In general, chromogranin A is negative in the neurons or in the ganglion cells, which are present in the central nervous system, in the brain in particular. So whenever we find a tumor in which we think this might represent a, a, a ganglioglioma, chromogranin positivity would strongly support this interpretation because as I told you, a chromogranin A is usually negative in the normal neurons. So in this way, we differentiate between entrapped neurons in diffuse gliomas, for example, which tend to be negative and abnormal or dysplastic neurons in ganglioglioma, which tend to be positive. And then more recently, of course, we know that around 50% of ganglioglomas are positive with BRAF. So we have diffuse a granular positivity in the cytoplasm or uh, on the cell membrane. The, in this example, in particular, in the ganglion cell component, but in other examples, it's usually positive in both the glial as well as the ganglionocytic uh, component. This is extremely important because many of of those tumors, since they are low grade, a grade one tumors, they do not really respond well to chemotherapy. And uh, they are very well controlled, really best control is with targeted treatment. So the final diagnosis in this case is ganglioglioma, CNSWHO, a grade one. I hope you find this uh, uh, tip useful in your daily practice. Thank you.